Do you want to know what's going on in the real estate market right here in Southwest Florida? That's what we're talking about on this video. Stay tuned. I'm Rob Wozner, a local realtor right here in Southwest Florida. If it's your first time on my channel and you want to know everything about eating, sleeping, working, playing, and the real estate market, this is the channel you need to subscribe to. So hit the subscribe button and tap the bell so you're notified every time I drop a new video. Can you believe we're already halfway through 2024 and the Florida realtors have just released its housing market statistics for the month of June? Despite a 59% increase in overall inventory during June compared to June of 2023, overall closed sales during the month decreased 17.3% to 710 closed sales from 859 closed sales back in June of 2023. Relative to a year ago, closed sales throughout the state were down a fair amount in June, similar to what we experienced back in March as well. Closed sales of single family homes fell by over 10% year over year in March and by over 11% in June. Over in the townhouse condo property type category, closed sales were down by almost 17% year over year in March and by over 20% in June. One thing, I want to take a look at existing home sales throughout the country, and the data is not pretty, as you can see from this graph. Sales are down 13% from last year and down a whopping 31% from the 10-year historical average. Most shocking to me is the trend line down. Like June and July last year shown by the blue line, it may rebound next month, but yikes. Of course, we had a decent bounce back from those March numbers in April, with sales actually increasing year over year. Will that happen in July? I'm somewhat optimistic. We'll see better year-over-year -year figures for closings than we did for June, but it'll be tough to say for sure if we'll exceed last July's totals. The report showed closed and pending sales were at a five-year low for the month. There's still a lot of homes lingering on the market with aspirational pricing, which is a disconnect between asking prices and market value. The overall median closed price decreased 0.8% to 595,000 and that's down from 600,000 back in June of 23. A steady number of list price reductions each month, coupled with a realistic prices set by sellers, will help the Naples market find its new sweet spot for home buying. Unsurprisingly, home growth prices remain somewhat stagnant throughout the state also. The median price for closed sales of single family homes in Florida was $427,000, a year over year increase of 1.7%. Over the townhouse condo category, the median sale price was less than last year's figure by just $100, coming in at $324,900. Something I like you to keep in mind is I consider price reductions to be new listings because these homes become a new option for a larger pool of buyers. This is helpful to buyers because June was the first month in 2024 where new listings were not above 1,200. Price reductions occur for many reasons. There could be nearby comparative homes that are priced lower. There have been no showings or no interest in the, in the listing or any offers on the home. The home has received a low appraisal or more. The biggest reason we see price reductions is to just attract more buyers. The June report showed 1,351 price reductions compared to 94 price increases. Coupled with a 95% list to sale price ratio, the data appears to indicate that sellers are making headway to adjust their initial asking prices to better reflect today's market and to some degree are entertaining negotiations to secure a buyer. Bounty of options, summer buyers will enjoy more home options as the inventory of properties continues to rise compared to the last three years. In June, a 59% increase in inventory resulted in an available pool of 4,680 properties, compared to only 2,943 properties back in June of 23. Plus, confidence in the market re remained steady, with overall new listings increasing in June by 1.5% to 896 new listings, and that's up from 882 new listings back in June of 23. Driving this influx of inventory was the number of new listings in the condominium market, which increased 9% compared to a 3.9% decrease in new listings for the single family market. One thing I definitely want to point out is the condominium market right now is very challenging because fees are increasing to meet structural integrity reserve law requirements. Condominium sellers and buyers should work with someone who's experienced like myself because we can help you figure out pricing. Given the future financial impact of these new reserve requirements to condominium values, on the other hand, this knowledge can also help during negotiations when purchasing. 
Now let's take a look at active inventory of single family homes statewide, which remained well above last year's levels as of the end of June. It was also up compared to the end of the month prior, but notice that it wasn't up at the same trajectory. That's something we need to watch for the coming months. Inventory may continue to rise, but how much and how fast? That's the question. Based only on this June's figure, it could be that single family inventory is converging toward what we might call a balanced market, at least at the statewide level. But this is just one month of data, so we'll need to keep an eye on it. It's always possible that inventory growth could reaccelerate in a month or two down the line. The biggest reason there was a slowdown in the rate of inventory growth in June was that year over year growth in new listings of homes for sale was easily the weakest it's been all year. Year to date, new listings of single family homes are up over 16%, but in June, they were only up by 6% compared to a year ago. New listings of townhouse and condos, meanwhile, are up by over 19% year to date, but were only up by at least 5% in June. With inventory levels where they are right now, the market has far more balance in it than it did a year ago. While inventory is nearly split between single family homes and condominiums, the median close price in the single family home market decreased 3% in June to $730,000, and that's down from $752,500 in June of 23. While the median close price in the condominium market increased 0.8%, to 485,000, and that's up from $481,250 a year ago. As always, I like to take a look at what's going on in zip, different zip codes throughout Naples. The South Naples area, which is 34112, 34113, reported the highest percentage of inventory increase in June, and it's up 80% compared to other geographic areas tracked by the local realtors. The median close price in South Naples increased 1.1% in June to $470,500, and that's up from $472,500 back in June of 23. Here's some bad news if you live in the North Naples area, which is where I live, uh, which is area codes 34109, 34110, 34119. Uh, we showed the highest decrease in median close price in June. We're down 15.2% to 627,500, and that's down from 740,000 uh, back in June of 23. So let's take a look at some final thoughts here. So sales activity, most people realized in the Naples housing market during the off season, which is the summer for us, uh, is historically lower in sales activity reported during the high season of winter whenever a lot of people are down here visiting. So the days on market increased 56% to 78 days from 50 days uh, back in June of 23. Before the pandemic, however, uh, we were between 90 and 100 days on the market. So we're still well below our traditional average. Once again, thank you for watching my monthly real estate market video report. If you're even thinking about making a move here to Southwest Florida, you need to take the first step. Give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, however you wanna get in touch with me. I have the systems and processes dialed down to make the transaction as smooth and easy as possible. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think of the current real estate market right here in Southwest Florida. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video.